everybody. Good morning. Made it to Dixon County, my hometown. Wanted you guys to meet my family. This would be my brother, Robin Simpkins. He died in 1985 on Memorial Day. Well, a couple of days after Memorial Day. And this is my mother and father, Hugh and Connie Faye Simpkins. Uh, so we are almost at the one month anniversary of my mom's death, her fifth year. And today, today is my father's birthday. It's got me feeling really kind of emotional. It's really hard when you don't have any family left out here. So... I guess I'm going to do story time this morning, and it's a little melancholy. I, I apologize for that, but that's okay. I'm here to share my life. So, my daddy died on June 1st of 2008. He had went into the hospital for a uh, to get half of his right lung taken out. When I was about 10 years old, they had found a spot in his lung... Uh, my dad suffered from rheumatoid arthritis all of my life. Um, he had me when he was 42 years old. And I don't know if you know anything about RA, but the medication, especially the older medications that were given for that and everything, um, your body is really susceptible to infections. So he was really always getting spinal infections, all kinds of just infections everywhere. So they found... I spot on his lung uh, when I was 10 years old, and um, mind you, he had been in the navies and Navy in the 50s. Then he went to work for American Standard when American Standard was still the toilet bowl company back in the 50s, and he was a sprayer. So, you know, back then their respiratory systems weren't good and shit, and they just, uh, they did what they did, of course. You know, and so... They found the spot on his right lung, and they thought it was tuberculosis or something else. It was not cancerous, um, so we never worried with it. But by the time he was 74, the, uh, the spot did turn into cancer, so they took half of his right lung. By this time, he had already... Um, my ex-husband was starting to carry him. Um, he was in... You know, uh, he was on a walk. Uh, he couldn't even walk anymore at all, actually, because he walked on his ankles or one of his ankles. Um, he no longer had the function of walking on the bottom of his foot. Um, he had bones growing out of the bottom of his feet. And so, so uh, anyways, he went to St. Thomas and he had his surgery, you know. And, and when he came out of surgery and stuff, um, I had made him some food. Because he also suffered from Alzheimer's. He got to a point where he didn't want nobody to feed him or give him his medications because he was scared everybody was trying to kill him and stuff. Alzheimer's is is a bad, bad situation. And sometimes you can make fun with it, but at the end of the day, it's still a bad situation. It's hard to watch your parents go down like that. So I made him some of his food and I took it to him and I was trying to feed him and he kept throwing up this black bile and it hurt him so bad so bad and he couldn't he couldn't eat he couldn't put anything in he couldn't even drink water um nothing was going into him and they had to send him to ICU so he got into ICU, and the doctor was telling him, look, we can do this, we can do this, we can do this. And Very young doctors, still uh, like maybe 36 years old, real young guy. And my dad looked at him, he said, no, this is what we're going to do. I want to die. I'm done. And uh, he's like, no, sir, no, sir, no, sir, no, sir, so... My daddy looked at me, and he said, Roxy, no, Bird, he called me Bird. He said, Bird, I'm really tired. I'm really done. You have a good husband. You have, you know, 
I go, family, can I please go? And what do you say? What do you say when your daddy asks you if he can go? I mean, I could have been selfish and said, no, daddy, no, no, no. But I had been there for so long watching him in such pain. So I told him, yes, daddy, if that's what you want, you can go. And he looked at my mom and he's like, Connie, I'm tired, I'm tired, I'm tired. And so she said yes. And then he looked at Mackenzie. And Mackenzie was eight years old. Poor girl. And he's like, look, I gotta go. And she was okay. And then Stephen was standing, my ex-husband was standing at the foot of the bed. And he's like, look, Stephen, you're a good guy. Please take care of my family. And the doctor was like, no, 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 I'm not doing this, I'm not doing this, I'm not doing this. So the doctor left the room, and he came back maybe 30 minutes later, and he said, look, Mr. Simpkins, I read over your chart. And he said, and I am willing to induce with morphine. And I'm going to give you 24 hours. If you do not pass in 24 hours... Then I'm going to bring you out of it, and we're going to get you healed so you can go home. And my dad was like, okay, okay. So that day, at 5 o'clock, they started inducing him with morphine. Of course, he went to sleep. You know, he was peaceful, and 